Welcome to the Beardsman, the show where we talk, <laughs> mock, and never walk away from the conversation. That's you, right. You talked over me. I was trying to be quiet. I was far away from the mic. Uh, that's <laughs> no few words. <laughs> He's literally mouth breathing on the mic. I was far away from it, Jr. Woo! <laughs> I'm here with the founders of Live Bearded, aka the Beardsman, Spencer and Anthony. What's up, guys? My name is Spence, and I'm Mink. And uh, guys, we started this show because as the founders, over the last seven years here at Live Bearded, we've had the privilege of speaking to literally thousands of dudes. It's our favorite thing we do here at Live Bearded. And so we started this show to bring the conversation to you, to answer your questions, and talk about the experience of being a man in the world today. That's right, guys. We are, we're passionate about encouraging and inspiring men to be the best versions of themselves. This podcast is, exists exact, to do exactly that, right? And the format's pretty simple. This is an Ask Us Anything, whether it's about live bearded, mindset, personal development, fitness, travel, literally anything. There's nothing that we're not going to... Talk Trend, about yeah, trendy slang, trendy slang. Yeah, which we'll we do just that. learned about. Yeah, we did. So if you guys have any questions, hit us up, Jr. How can they get those questions to us? They can ask questions by submitting them at ask at livebearded.com. So email us, or you can comment them in the video below. We can get them that way. But send us an email. It's more personable, and you can like chat with us and get to know us yeah. a little better. Yeah, exactly. Chat with us. Get to know us. <laughs> Because we're just going to chat and get to <laughs> know <laughs> gonna be, you guys through these questions and yeah. make yeah. wild assumptions. About yeah, I don't know. I'm feeling pretty salty right now, actually. Yeah. Why are you salty? <laughs> I well, feel like you should be on cloud nine right now. No, right? man. I'm, I'm, you know, no, I'm not really feeling too salty, but I'm, I'm in a mood. You're in, in a, a mood. mood. In a mood. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Caught a like, vibe. Sometimes you just need to say, bye, Felicia. Bye, Felicia. Oh. <laughs> I see some of those doing there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Come mm -hmm. on, man. I got the receipts. <laughs> okay. Okay. I got the fucking receipts. <laughs> this Gen Z slang you're yeah, throwing beat. out yeah. on beat, me, baby. Beat. Yeah, beat. <laughs> you guys, you guys got any tea for us? I mean, I mean what's dang? Like, so before we started the show, so hip. before <laughs> we started the show, uh, I don't. I think wow, it might have been me. Really one glowing. of us. One it's of really us. Glowing. I'm, I'm he glowed up. He glowed up. Baby. Yeah. We were talking about like random Gen Z slang words because we're all '80s kids, right? Yeah. We're, we're, '88. Okay. So like '87. Yeah, yeah. '85. Yeah. We were born in the '80s, right? So we're essentially old these days. <laughs> Apparently. But these these Apparently kids on the block, man, these new guys, they got all these weird <laughs> slang words, and we didn't know what they were. So I Googled it, and we were going through and reading the different ones. Uh, no cap, baby. No cap. No lie. Yeah. That means no uh, your Halloween costume is incredible. No cap, baby. No cap. <laughs> I, I don't know how what these What a weird work. way to say that. Yeah, yeah. Swerve. There's literally several Swerve. definitions. Oh, I don't know. Avoid Swerve, something. Know. Steer clear. Oh, that's... Swerve. That's pretty that, straightforward, that, that actually. Sense. Yeah. Okay. yeah. <laughs> well, how does that yeah. come up in a conversation? Yo, man, you swerve, swerve away that. from the topic of their <laughs> pronouns. Yo, bro, we don't swerve here. We don't mock or walk away from <laughs> yeah. the conversation. Yeah, no we swerving. swerve into it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's, it slaps, oh, man. Yeah, how you guys doing? It slaps. <laughs> I didn't know you were still, still going. going. The list go. How long is this list? Dude, I'm on 27. You know, I'm just slaying through yeah. this list. <laughs> slaying the list. <laughs> oh, oh, I'm sure man. they're adding to the list as we right? speak. Yeah, I mean, like, read is in here, but that doesn't make sense. Is essentially an insult. Dude, that's read, man. Read. He readed me. Read. Read? I don't know. Read. Used as read. a verb, read. read is essentially an insult. A catty way of calling out someone's flaws is that just i don't get that I one don't know. <laughs> that one doesn't make sense no. stretch no i'm dead a lot of these are a stretch <laughs> yeah to be honest yeah drop us a comment below <laughs> let us know what's the most ridiculous <laughs> slang word you've ever heard or what what slang word do you use yourself my favorite is do you, guys, do you guys use any of the stands pretty good yeah do you guys use any of these i, I use stand most of these. Mm. i use bet when bet. i'm like bet when i'm trying to like just be over the top and like, dude, bet, <laughs> bet, man. Like I'm just making fun of the Gen Z <laughs> talk. Yeah, bro. I mean, that's Gucci. <laughs> that's Gucci. <laughs> that's Gucci. <laughs> yeah, we ain't chuggy here. Hey, <laughs> hey, we got to keep it 100 on this podcast, okay? Keep it 100. Yeah. You use yeah. that one a lot. Keep it yeah. 100. Yeah. yeah. When we keep it oh, 100. Yeah. Shit Absolutely. Gets yeah. Lit in this house. Lit. <laughs> We're bro, getting litty up in here. Yeah, man. Hey, this pod is low key, okay? <laughs> <laughs> yep, just yep. like my shirt, low key. Just yeah, like your yeah. shirt. Yeah, you gotta ratchet up the vibes with that shirt, bro. Yeah, just rat ratchet. <laughs> <laughs> ratchet is a slang too. Ratchet's what? Ratchet. 
That's what I'm. <laughs> ah, <laughs> you got it. Ah. I got you, man. This is you used savage. it so you used it so good savage. though that I wasn't savage. sure you yeah. like yeah. adopted the slang so fast. On, I'm working on my action skill or my acting skills, Stan. <laughs> Good job. Stand. Stand. <laughs> I'm not standing right now. <laughs> oh, damn. What's going on in your world today, guys? <sighs> Where are we at? We got uh, Uller just launched. Uller just launched. If you guys got Uller, you know it was amazing. If you didn't, I'm sorry. We, we literally sold out in like the matter of a few days. That was pretty awesome. Those guys were it's thirsty for some One of Uller. the best fragrances, one of the best launches we've ever had. Feedback has been fantastic. Content was fun. We had, we had a lot of fun with that one. Yeah. yeah AF, bro. AF. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we had fun. We had AF. fun AF. Yeah. Okay. I don't know. I'm, I'm still going. We're at 50. Oh, my. It's still going. Number 50. Any guesses what 50 is? Uh, does it have 50? Oh. I don't know. <laughs> is it Fitty? Like Fitty <laughs> said? Like getting, hey, I'm, I'm Liddy. Getting fitty, fitty in fitty. the gym. Getting fitty in the gym. <laughs> Twerk. Twerk. <laughs> that feels Twerk. really old. Yes. Yeah, that one's not really. Dated list. That one's, or we're just scrolling pretty Oh, that pretty was it. Top it. 50. Okay. Top 50. All right. Guys, I'm gonna, we're going to post the link to the top 50 2023 slang words in the show notes. Yeah. And I want you to tell us which one is your favorite. Um, I don't know which one my favorite is. I'm, I'm struggling here. There's a lot favorite? of these. Like I said, I like Stan. I think Stan's strong. Stan, yeah. Stan's my it's favorite. Creative. It's creative. It's, it's also it's a, it's from nod, our it's generation. Our generation. It's a nod to Eminem. I, I, li I like that. I get down with yeah. that. Yeah, I like receipts. Because I got the fucking receipts. <laughs> to prove it. All yeah. right. All right. So, yeah, what's <coughs> going on? We got, a, we got a podcast to do right now. Yeah. We got some, we got some questions that, that yeah. we sourced in from the community, right? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yep. After going through the slang, let me tell you about some other questions <laughs> that we have here. Uh <laughs> Our first question comes from Sarah. Sarah's question is, how do you recognize when you're stressed? Mm. Yeah. It depends on what slang words I'm using. If I'm if I'm really Are we only using slang <laughs> slang words to explain? Yeah. I'm so stressed right now. Yeah. <laughs> Thinking of these slang high, high, words. High key stressed. <laughs> high key stress. Yeah, stress is an interesting one, right? I think uh I think there's good stress and there's bad stress. For sure. Um and we've talked about this before, right? Yep. It's like um I think good stress is is important to have in our lives. It's like pushing beyond our comfort zone, uh, trying new things, putting ourselves in new environments where we're not necessarily uh, confident or sure. I think those situations cause you to feel a little bit more stressed. And I think sh there's like good stress that is a factor of growth. And then there's bad stress, which is a factor of uh, just focusing on shit you can't control. Um, for me, when I get really stressed out in my life, uh, I notice it because my energy is like gone and I just like, I feel like things are very heavy. And I had someone ask me this one time, I was talking to a buddy and he was like, you know, I was like sharing a, a struggle that I was having and a decision I was making. And he's like, well, does that feel light or heavy? And I was like, oh, it feels really heavy. Mm -hmm. And he's like, well, what about the other one? And I was like, oh, that doesn't feel as, that doesn't feel as heavy. That, that actually feel. And he's like, then do the one that doesn't feel as heavy. And that was a really interesting aha moment for me because I think in life we like we physically feel the decisions that we make, the, the challenges, the struggles that we're going through. Like we have a physiological reaction to it. And so for me, I'm like stress for me, I feel into that. Like when it feels heavy or when I'm just like noticing that my energy is low. Um, that's how I recognize stress in my life based on like the way that I'm feeling. Um, and then I try to just change the way that I feel by like moving my body or or changing my my focus on something like again I think oftentimes and I'm not an expert but in any means but in my life when I have the most stressed out it's typically when there's something outside of myself that I can't control or that is controllable but influencing me negatively yeah. and so you said something interesting there about stress like being in that situation you said that you Feel like you don't have energy or something are there mm -hmm. moments when you don't even know you're stressed like are you are there times when you're just going through life g doing the motions and you don't realize how stressed you are because of the lack of energy or just like maybe not lack of awareness but just like just being in the motion so much and doing it for so long that you forget what stress feels like? It's an interesting question. I think I'm trying to think of an example, right? Like I think an example everyone can relate to at some point in time is financial stress, right? So like we've all had a point in our life where, you know, we were stressed out about money or bills or something. 
Um, and that feeling is very pervasive because oftentimes there isn't a lot in that individual moment that you can do. Um, and so that feels, again, very heavy. And mm -hmm. I think in that regard, um, what was your question? What, how, how does it show up? It, well, mm. like, do you have awareness or how do you recognize if you're in the, like, if you're just going through your day to day and you're feeling yeah. stressed, that's compounding and growing. Like, how do you recognize that you are stressed versus just like, that's just part of your day. Yeah. It wasn't, yeah, it wasn't even like really a question. It was just something that you said interesting. Like how to bring an awareness to it. Yeah. yeah. Like you didn't even, you, you said that you didn't even realize you were stressed. You just knew that you didn't have a lot of energy or something. Yeah. Well, I think as, as human beings, we can build up tolerance to stress, right? And I think you said it perfectly. There's good and bad stress. And I, I kind of compare it to the gym, right? If you want to grow a muscle, like you have to stress the muscle and the tension and, and really tear it to grow the muscle, right? And so there's good stress in growth. And I think anything financial stress, any, any amount of stress can be good and healthy if it's pushing you to learn and grow and evolve yeah. as a human. That's a good thing gone too far and it can be detrimental to your health right and yeah. so how you find awareness that to me i agree i think if it's um like if i i if i notice my sleep's not if i'm not sleeping and recovering well like there's there's something there to kind of unpack just trying to bring awareness to your overall energy yeah um yeah I, I, as i'm trying to think through a frame of this it's like what's a good example and let's just use the business as an example yeah. right because God knows, like, as an entrepreneur, you've got more Endless. stress yeah, than you know what to do with, right? Yeah, and let's just talk about this summer for Live Beer Kid, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, but but through the course of, of the business, right, there's, like, multiple stages of growth. And at every stage of growth, whether it's, like, a, a new employee or, you know, the business is growing, so the amount of inventory or the amount of expenses that we have get bigger. And so one of the things that they... You keep looking at me when you're saying these things. <laughs> I'm trying to make New employees, <laughs> expenses. I'm trying to make eye contact, bro. Um, one of the things that's very interesting in business is like everyone wants to focus on the, the sales growing, mm -hmm. but you don't actually, at least I didn't realize that like, okay, yeah, we want to do X amount of sales and we want to grow our sales, but there's correlating expenses to that, yeah, right? 100%. So like every dollar we make in sales, we're spending 25% of that on marketing. Yep. Right, so if we want to make you know ten thousand dollars, we got to spend twenty five hundred. If we want to make a hundred thousand dollars, we got to spend twenty five thousand dollars. And so as the sales get bigger, you're like, holy shit! How do we spend that much on marketing, or how do we spend that much on people, or warehouse or buying, space, or, or and it's like, oh my gosh! And the numbers get bigger, and then you just feel like the weight of that because it's yeah. pushing you beyond any level of comfort that you've had before. And so for me, in those moments, like when it's good stress, I almost have to like recalibrate myself. A good example is a thermometer, right? Like if a, therm if, a, if a thermostat is set at 70 degrees, if it gets too hot or too cold, it's going to kick back on and keep you at like 70 degrees. And most of us have a stress thermostat in our life that doesn't ever allow us to like get, get too overstressed or get too understressed. Like we kind mm -hmm. of like if things are going too easy, we, we sit, tend to like add shit onto our plate to try to like make us feel like we got stuff going on or vice versa. Um, and so I think in, in my life, it's more about like recognizing w which direction I'm being pushed in. Is it like good or bad? And then like course correcting or leaning into it. Um, but the only way I know how to recognize it is based on how I'm feeling. Um, yeah, I feel like if it's debilitating where you can't take action for me, that would be a good indicator of like, I've got so much going on that I can't make decisions or take action. It's then causing me to yeah. be stuck. That would be unhealthy stress. Yeah. But recognizing that if I'm stressed because there's a deadline or a project and that's making me like for me, I perform great under stress because it's like I know I have a deadline. I know I need to get this done. That's healthy stress to push you to excel. Yeah. Right. Well, and that's also a belief. Yeah. Right. Like by and I think here's like I think the most important thing about stress. A, it's never going away. So just accept that. Totally. And B, understand that your relationship to stress is is created by the meaning that you give to it. So not to get like too down a rabbit hole of psychology, but we're giving things meanings all of the time. And the meanings that we give things are bullshit. Yeah. Like we just make them up. It's either yeah. a, it's either like the end or the beginning. Like this this bad this bad month in business is either like means that the business is going to die or it means like, oh, man, we're going to grow through that challenge yeah. and, and like kick butt the next month or whatever. So, A, it's never going away. And B, be intentional with the meaning that you associate to things like having a difficult time in your relationship. You're, you're about ready to have a newborn kid. Yeah. I imagine there's going to be a lot of Fuck stress, yeah. <laughs> right? And so like, how do you relate to that stress? Yeah. Do you see it as positive or negative or as a growth opportunity? 100%. Or do you see it as like, fuck, things are all fucked and too crazy yeah. and I can't get, How can you know? I do all this? Yeah. Yeah. yeah.
So more than stress itself, I think it's the relationship we have to it and how we view it. And then just having the awareness to know like, okay, this is something that I can control. So let me like make sure that this is moving me forward. Yeah. This over here is something I can't control. So I just need to learn to let go of it and focus on what I actually can. Yeah. And I think if we can do that, then the, the relationship to stress that we have will improve and the amount that we experience it will decrease to some degree. I love that question. That was great, great question. Yeah, it's so relevant to the, it, we queue up the next one, but it's so relevant to life. You yeah. know, who, who asked that one? Sarah. Yeah. Sarah, thanks for tuning in. I appreciate you hanging out with us on the beer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Our next question comes from Dave. Dave. Dave said, tell us about a stranger you still remember. What made them memorable? Hmm. What do you got, stranger. Spence? JR, you got one? Stranger. Um, I have, I, I, have, I, I have one. It's not a gr it's not a good experience, but forever it's okay. like burned into my. All mind. right, well, let's hear it now. All right, so uh, I was a Cub Scout, and we were selling raffle tickets oh, for. Where's this going? Where, wherever, <laughs> but we're like, uh, I'm like eight, eight or nine years old, yeah. something like that. Uh, actually, no, I think I'm. I think I'm like 17? six or seven. 18? Yeah, I'm 17 years old, <laughs> selling raffle tickets with the Cub Scouts. No, I'm like seven years old. I'm, I'm really young, and there's like seven of us. But we were all standing outside of like a Walgreens selling uh, raffle tickets, and the parents did a really bad job corralling us. So whenever people would walk in or out of the store, there would be this mob of seven-year-olds just swarming around them. <laughs> and there was one guy that I – will forever be remembered in my mind. As he was walking from the parking lot inside, we all surrounded him. He's like, get away from me. Get, get away. Get away. Like, he's he's like in his 60s or something, but he's just so, like, looking back, like, we really made him panic. Like, we scared him really bad. So, yeah, forever you can he's see his life. face clear as day. Yeah, I had never seen true fear until <laughs> I saw that man's face, and I haven't seen the match since. <laughs> Nice. So that's why he's burned into my mind. That's awesome. Not positive, like I said. All right. Well, I got a positive one. All right. This one you can relate to. Uh, Mink and I had uh, the privilege of traveling down to the Cook Islands a few years back, and we needed a little disconnect from the business to go down, clear our heads, change the scenery, and just strategize and kind of do some deep thinking. And beautiful Cook Islands in, it's in the South Pacific. So think tropical, crystal turquoise, clear water. It's like Fiji, it's like Tahiti, Fiji, Bora Bora. Stunning. <laughs> Do you not know that? Wow, that's actually pretty cool. Oh, <laughs> I was being goofy. That wasn't all right. Never mind. <laughs> so I we go down do to the Cook Islands. We go on this boat tour. We meet this this guide who's who's hosting us, and this is arguably one of the nicest man like you'll ever meet. He's got a, a smile, grinning ear to ear, and he's hosting us and going around. And I just, I just, I don't know much about the guy. You may be able to share a little bit more about him specifically, but I remember him being so kind and so just high energy and just really loving on everybody there. And he told everyone it was his first day on the job. And you would believe it by the way that he was acting, right? Going over the top, helping with anything and everything. And uh, he'd been doing it for years, but he loved telling people that it was his first day on the job because that's how he looked at the opportunity to come to work every single day. And it's kind of stuck with me because I feel like if you can carry that first day on the job mentality and how you show up, how playful or energetic you are at the opportunity that you have in this day to add value, to get to work, to support your team, to support your community. It's fucking powerful and it's contagious and that influences kind of the energy of the room. And um, man, that man was awesome. I don't know yeah. if you want to share any, your, your perspective <laughs> I, I, on it. I don't remember exactly what he said, but I remember we landed on, on this like little island where we were doing this boat tour and he pulls up in this like bus and he's like corralling everybody. There's maybe like 20 of us that are going to go on this boat tour. And he's like, OK, you know, my name is I can't remember his name. He's like, my name is whatever. And this is our bus. And our bus can fit maybe 10 Polynesians, but like 30 Japanese. So we got kind of a small bus. And he was like, everybody get in, make friends. And and like he sent us off on our way. But yeah, he was uh, he told us this story. At least I was talking to him. Because when, when Spence and I went up to him, we're like, man, how long have you been doing this? And he's like, this is my first day. And we were like, wait, what? And he's like, actually, I, I was born on this island. I've been doing it pretty much my whole life. But uh, he told us this story about how because he always lived on this beautiful island, he started, he got to a place where he just didn't appreciate it anymore. He lost his perspective and he actually uh, didn't enjoy living there or what he was doing. Um, and then he had to go to New Zealand 
for something. And he spent a few weeks in New Zealand. And that gave him the perspective to understand like how special and beautiful his island was. And he's like, ever since I came back, I've started saying it's my first day on the job as a reminder of like how beautiful it is and how every day I want to show up and like really appreciate um, what I get to do and where I get to live. And I get to share this beautiful island with people that probably will never see it again. So it was, it was really cool. I, I definitely that's um, you know, I have this day one mentality that I live my life by and I post about it every day on social media and. Um, I just think that there's very few things in life as important as enjoying the present moment and just being like, we don't know when the next moment is going to come from, like if we're going to get another moment, how many moments we get like, yeah. And every day, you know, we interact with different people and I don't know. I just think it's uh, it's a profound way to look at life. And mm -hmm. I appreciate that one. I have two. Um, I was actually looking through some old pictures and I saw this picture of me that uh i was sitting on the it was this was in thailand i was sitting on the ground in thailand next to this guy who has no legs and i remember when i i was living in thailand for a few months and every day i would like go by this market and there was this guy and he was just this uh this thai man who had no legs and he couldn't talk so he was basically like had no legs and he was deaf so he could only do sign language and he just would sit in the same spot on the street every day and he had a little cup you know that he was like trying to get money from people but he was the only person that i saw in all of thailand that wasn't like begging people as they walked by he just smiled and waved at everybody mm. and he just had like the biggest smile and he was you could just feel like the warmth and the kindness in him and every day i walked by i just looked at him and smiled and smiled and gave him a fist bump and he had fist bumped me and then one day and he, i ended up taking a picture with him and this fucking guy got more money than me than i know what i like i don't even know how much money i gave him because every time i walked by he just like he was so warm and genuine and he never asked for anything that I just kept like giving him money every time I walked by. But I just remember that because a, I saw the picture of it just the other day I was going through some pictures and I saw that, but I just remember being so moved by a guy because he had again, no legs. He couldn't talk, couldn't hear. And he just seemed to have this energy, this love, this like happiness to him. And I, I remember one day I was like driving by and I seen him and he was walking on his hands. Like that was how mm -hmm. he like walked down the sidewalk. Whoa. Um, it was just, uh, it was really incredible. And I feel like there's moments like that that give us so much perspective. There's a really cliche quote, but it's like, I, uh, I was upset I didn't have new shoes until I saw the man that didn't no have feet. any feet or something like that, you know? And it's, I think the best thing that we can have in life is a perspective. Mm -hmm. um, going back to the stress situation, like the more stressed out you get, I, I would say the cure to a lot of stress is like more perspective. You know, it's like putting yourself in a position to be grateful for something or think about something or put it in, in perspective in relationship to something else. But that was, that was one. And then the other one um, is, a, is a live bearded story. I remember the business was super early. We were like two or three months into getting the business started. And I was on a plane and I was working on an email. Basically, I was writing an email to send out a promotion to the customer base. It was probably like 400 at the time. Like it was nothing. Early days. Early days. Real I don't know. It was, it was maybe bigger than that. It was maybe a few thousand, but genuinely it was very small. We were very, it was like 2016. Um, and I hit a pr I hit preview to send myself an, a version of the email so I could just read through it and make sure that I didn't spell anything too wrong. And uh, I, preview it i pull it up in my email and i'm like reading it and the guy next to me is like oh you should buy their products and i was like what excuse me and he's like you should buy their products i i use them that's a good company and he's like he had a goatee and he's like i know i don't have a full beard but i like to take care of my goatee and uh i recommend them and i literally turned my computer and i was like this company live bearded he goes yes they're great you should buy them and i was like <laughs> Sweet man, thanks for the recommendation. You know, I never told him that I was the owner of the company or anything, but it was just, it was really cool because I remember having that experience and being like, wow, like, A, what are the chances? And two, if some random stranger on the computer or on the plane is going to tell me that, that I should buy from my company, not knowing who I am, like, that means we're doing something right mm -hmm. and we should just continue to keep doing that. And what's been crazy with Live Bearded is we never thought we would be in this position. And the only reason why we're in this position with the company and the warehouse and everything that we do is because of guys like that in the community and 100%. the people that we've met along the way. So uh, it is crazy how you can meet some random stranger and they could burn some crazy memory mm -hmm. into your brain because you scared them or yep. because of some <laughs> life lesson yeah. or 
uh, whatnot. But freaking strangers, man, it's crazy. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> you also so just be said a good 100. human out there because you may impact somebody's life and they may remember you forever. Yeah, you also <laughs> just said a hundred too. By the way, I don't know if you caught yourself. <laughs> Hundred percent, hundred percent. The slang. Well, no, you know, that's I'm trying different. to learn. I think I I say one hundred percent all the time. Yeah. But I think one hundred being like, yeah, dude, I hundred percent agree. Versus like, that's yeah, 100. bro, keep it one hundred. I think those are very different. <laughs> I think they're different. <laughs> I stand by my yeah, hundred percent. No, hundred percent. They're hundred percent. Hundred percent. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yes, sirs. Bro, yes, sirs. Keep it one hundred. <laughs> okay. I'll keep it one hundred fifty. Yeah. That question is slap, man. What else we got? <laughs> Yeah, bet. Bet. <laughs> bet. <laughs> the next question comes from Steven. Steven says, if you could have one superpower, what would it be and how would you use it? X-ray vision. I can't tell you how I would use it. <laughs> I'm just joking. I wouldn't have X-ray vision. Uh, what would I have? I'd have teleportation. Teleportation. Yeah. yeah go anywhere really fast. I would status. take Amazon out of the logistics game so fast. Yeah. Just do deliveries all yeah. day. Yep. Well, I well, do it like two days a week. Let me ask <laughs> two you. Two days this. a week, and that's it. If you if you could jump anywhere, teleport, would you jump to the moon? No. <laughs> no. no Why the moon? Why? I don't know, because you could go you, there. You can go anywhere. I, I mean, the... I could, but like. Just check it out. Uh, I, I mean, I'd rather go to like Area Fifty One or okay. Fort Knox. So it's, yeah. it's like number fifty on your list. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know, man. Just to look up and be like, boop, and you pop yourself yeah. on the moon. I'm mean, pretty sweet. I'd go. I my my question though is like, do you need some special suit? I, I, Prop. No, no, you can just go up there and stand. Yes, you need a special <laughs> suit to go to the moon. <laughs> that's that's a silly question, Meek. <laughs> I mean, like, maybe you turn it into a, a challenge, like a feat of strength. Like, who could go to the moon? How, how long could I hold my breath on the moon? Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Just freeze to death <laughs> while you're up there. Yeah, I wonder how, how cold is it on the moon? It's pretty it's, cold. It's hey, pretty Siri, how cold is it on the moon? I mean, no. there's virtually no atmosphere. <laughs> All right. What's your Spence? Superpower. Oh, man. I'd probably, I'd probably uh, have the ability to slow down time. That's where my, that's where my gut went. Like if you can slow down time, so you can experience more in life, I think that'd be pretty pretty special uh, superpower. Yeah, more yeah. time with family, more presence, like more time to get shit done, more time to travel, more time to spend with loved ones. So in just freezing time. Be to slow it down. Do like you a age period of life? In like that you think time? you would still age, but it, it would slow down the aging, right? Oh, so if there's okay. a part of your life you really wanted to embrace more, you could just like almost hit the the pause button, but still experience it. But the time doesn't mm. go by so fast. Okay. In case anybody's wondering. During the day, it gets upwards of 250 degrees Fahrenheit on the moon. And at night, it's like Phoenix. It gets down to about 200 degrees, neg negative 200 degrees. Wow. So, yeah, you definitely would need a little bit of a suit to survive up there for sure. Yeah. It gets that hot on the moon and that cold just yeah. from I sun figured rays? the cold. I did not figure the, the heat. 200 degrees Fahrenheit. Yeah, lunar equator reaches a boiling 250 degrees, <laughs> while nighttime temperatures get a chilly negative 208. Because to your point, there's no atmosphere, so so the sun's rays. You better, you better time that shit it. perfectly if you're yeah. telling. Well, I gotta go like right on the edge. Yeah. I bet there's like a happy spot yeah. that's like I'll get like 90 degrees, maybe well, look, seven. Yeah. There, you got to transition from negative 200 yeah, it swings. to positive 200. So there's definitely a moment in time in there where you're. Getting out of nice degrees. 60, yeah. 70 degrees. Yeah, there, there's a spot there that yeah. is just yeah. right, and that's the part of the moon that everyone's going to colonize. Yeah, exactly. You got San Diego up to like Nevada or something, and everything in between. Uh, superpower. You know, it's easy to want to say like flying, teleportation, uh, speed, X-ray vision. I mean, I think these are all really good ideas. I don't know why, but I feel like having something to do with like living a very, very long time. And this is controversial mm. because, you know, if you could live a thousand years, like how like how much could you see? How much could you learn? How much could you create experience? Yeah. But like everybody that, you know, Seeing all your loved is ones is going to die <laughs> yeah. like 10 times over. Yeah. So like that, that makes it a little bit tough because you're like, OK, your first hundred years, like everybody knows going to die. Then you go into your second hundred years. Everybody knows going to die. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? So, I bet the first 200 years would be rough. And then after that, you just. Like, all right. You stop caring, like See you later. enter your your thirties of your thousands. <laughs> yeah, right? You're like, I don't care. I'm I'm in the prime of my life at three hundred years old, and then four hundred. You're like, 
oh, I want to start settling down, think about your career at 500. <laughs> Imagine, like, what you could experience and create, though. Like, man. Like I'm going to go with that one just for the fuck of it. Just for the fuck of it. All yeah, right. just because. Because yeah. everybody else wants to do, so wait, like, like, the crazy stuff. It, or just, like, regeneration? Or because it, it is your power... Like immortality? Is that the power? For a thousand years. I think everybody has to die at some point. So really long lifespan. Really yeah, resilient. Yeah. yeah but More I time want, to experience. I, I want to be like my physical capacity today yeah. for a thousand Sustained. years. Sustained. Yeah. So like 35, 37 year old body, strength. Maybe a few vitality. less gray hairs, right? You know what, man? Like, I'm good with it. Okay. Right, I'm embracing ah, he's it. good with he's it. He's embracing now. it. All right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> good for you. Yeah. For those of you who don't know the story, you haven't been listening to the past episodes. Not that long ago, I was on a first date, and this girl turns to me and says, I really like your salt and pepper. I was like, wait, what? <laughs> salt and pepper? I never heard that shit before. <laughs> and I realized I'm getting a little gray, running the company, dealing with everything. You know, well, I guess maybe stress. I'm a little more stressed out <laughs> than normal. But they say that's not correlated, but I think it definitely is. I think, I think yeah, I don't know the science behind it. If you've it. ever looked at, like, a president that went in, and, a, yeah. like, look at a they picture age. of Obama— in the beginning of his term, and <laughs> yeah. then a picture Page when he 20 came years. out. Oh my it's gosh, insane. twenty years, yeah. yeah, for sure. In yeah. those eight years, yeah. look at Biden, and well, he still looks oh, the he's, same. He's <laughs> no. Oh man! All right, so do better, do to the week. What do we got? Do better, do to the week. Spence, yeah, you want to tell them what? Yeah, it is? Yeah, if you're listening, and you're not sh uh, sure what this segment is. We created this because let's be honest, there's a lot of shit and negativity in the world. If you turn on social media or the news, you're going to likely see some sort of negative article or topic and so we intentionally wanted to feature guys that are out in the world doing good so here at live bearded we believe it's our responsibility to do better every single day and so we just want to go out into the community find articles and share some good news with you guys because the shit's inspiring we yeah. want to acknowledge and recognize these men for what they're doing so who do we got today we actually have two oh. do better oh. dudes this week yep JR, you're, you're overachieving, bro. Yeah, bro. I know. You're I bringing the receipts today. I like to stress myself out and overachieve. <laughs> Bet. <laughs> Bet. Uh, the, so uh, our two Do Better dudes are Nick Pryor and Justin Walker. They are two men who are competing to go to team, or they are on Team USA wheelchair softball. Sweet. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. So And they're both from here in Arizona. Uh, Local but, boys, huh? yeah, but they uh, they've overcome adversity uh, through this though, which makes it really interesting. So Justin Walker was playing college baseball when he was 18, and there was a freak accident um, when he slid into home plate and his neck was broken. Mm. And when that happened, he became a uh, paraplegic and he was stuck in a wheelchair after that. That was in 2009. It's uh, 2023 now. So over this time, he has developed the skills and he's grown back and he's become strong again and he's figured out how to compete. And now he's competing in uh, wheelchair softball for Team USA. There's every reason to give up, but you know he, he kept at it. He's like, no, my life's not over. I'm just going to grow in a different way. And this is the direction I'm going to go now. Great for Justin Walker doing that. Uh, and then let me throw in Nick Pryor's story in as well. Nick Pryor was five years old when... He lost his right leg, um, I believe. Uh, but Nick Pryor lost his leg uh, as a five-year-old, and he had to use prosthetics in order to, you know, be able to compete mm. and walk around. And prosthetics back in, like, you know, early 2000s aren't what they are today. Today, they've come so far. Yeah. But, you know, he was overcoming adversity with just, like, soreness and tiredness with the muscle because, the you know, the, the stump – I. Is that the right term? That feels so wrong to say stump, but uh, the appendage that was in the prosthetic, whatever was there, would always bother him. Pryor kept at it. He kept growing, making himself stronger until he was able to compete for Team USA uh, with the wheelchair softball yeah, and everything. Cool. But yeah, they're they're planning on going to Tokyo and working towards that. Yeah, or not amazing. Tokyo, Japan. Uh, I'm actually not sure. But they're going to Japan. They're going to Japan for sure. <laughs> for sure, it's in Japan. Dude, that's yeah. amazing. But yeah, these are two dudes that overcome adversity. Yeah, I love hearing stories like this, right? It's like you could play the victim and, and pity party for yourself and kind of go, you know, put yourself down and say, wow, why is this happening to me? And just kind of give up uh, to hear that. I mean, Justin was at the 
arguably the pinnacle. He's in college baseball, the highs of highs, to then go from that. To Working into the prime of his life. Into like the prime his, of his life. He's getting there. To then be a paraplegic and, and be, be uh, go through that experience, but not just give up in that moment and just never play again. Like to keep, keep his competitive spirit and put in the work to get stronger and find ways to uh, still compete and, and pursue his, his passion. It's fucking inspiring. It's super cool. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> this is a good example of the day one mentality and, like, you never know what's going to happen. I mean, I hate to say it, but at any moment in our life, something can change forever. And so, A, like, understanding that and maximizing the, to the day to the best of our ability, I think, is, is so powerful. And then, you know, another thing I think about often is what's wrong is always available, and so is what's right. You know, in a situation like this, they could have both focused on what was wrong. They had this freak accident. They were a victim of it. There's nothing they could do. Their life is fucked forever. And they could have played that card. But instead, they have taken a situation that is less than favorable and tried to figure out how they can still pursue a life on their terms in spite of that. And it sounds like both of them had a love for for sports and, yeah. and found a way to, given their situation or circumstances, still create aspects of their life that are defined by their terms and what they want, not what has happened in the past or what their limits might be um so powerful and such a good reminder to all of us for sure to um you know if we can focus on all the shit in our life and the challenges and the stress and the struggles or we can focus on the opportunities and the blessings and the unique uh situations that have been given to us and use those in a positive way thanks for sharing the story that's great you're welcome that's gonna do it for us today on the beardsman yeah, guys, thanks for tuning in and hanging out with us. You know, again, we do this simply because we want to connect with our community. We want to answer your questions, chop it up, make fun of each other. Ha ha. Drop some receipts and uh, buy Felicia. I don't, I don't know what that means. Kiki. Kiki. I don't know what that one was. Yeah, it was, it was like Kiki is what Kiki. I would say when I had to go to the bathroom as a kid. Like, I got, I got Kiki. Kiki's. <laughs> uh, but. The moral of the story is we just love hanging out with you guys. We appreciate you. Live Bearded doesn't exist without you guys hanging out with us, supporting us, and allowing us to support you. So from all of us here at Live Bearded on The Beardsman, as always, Live, live Bearded! bearded! <laughs> Bye, Felicia. <laughs> <laughs>